How do you do, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, Seth Julian, welcoming you to this week's Look Ahead into Next Week. We're going to take a slight digression from our usual procedure of looking at what we expect to happen next week and focus on a subject that we're going to be dealing with in a uh, staff briefing on Monday at uh, Monday at 1 o'clock. We're going to have a little talk about this very subject, so I want to reinforce it. I sent the... Um, a PPT upon which will loot the the, uh, the uh, talk will loosely be based, but the point um, I, I, the reason I digress from the usual procedures is that I, I it's time I think that we try to address if you want to address I shouldn't say you know I'm not setting policy but should the policy or anybody think to choose a policy that tries to key into what our clients are hearing all around them what's happening in the world may be confused about how to, or if at all, there's any benefit in, for them, um, and are just generally scared and a little bit concerned and therefore not likely to turn to a, an online broker for an opportunity to exploit these circumstances. So my point is that I think we can touch these people by, by speaking directly to these circumstances and um, showing them the different possibilities that exist for possibly exploiting these circumstances. So uh, I'll just make, oh, excuse me, just one, excuse me, one moment, I'll pause. Pardon that interruption. So for the purpose of of review, like, like the old salesperson's rule, you know, tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and then tell them what you told them, I want to um, remind you or get you to think about these things because I can only go so far with this. You, you folks need to think about how you can capture clients using this. And, and, you know, that's why I want you to think about this for as long and as deeply as you can, because I can guarantee you uh, that they're thinking about this stuff, or they're hearing this stuff, or they're seeing this stuff, or they're feeling it in their pocketbook. This is serious business. These are major changes that are uh, uh, the, changing the world. Our people and our potential people are well aware of them, and so we should capitalize them. Well, yes, we're not in a news agency. We can certainly surf the wave that the news agencies uh, create for us. So I'll just run through them quickly here. I don't want to spend too much time on this. This is just a reminder. It's not the usual briefing. These are, there are three major sea changes taking place in the world, and one that we call temporary, or what the, what the banks like to use the word transitory, a miserable word. So let's start with this one. This will, and, and the reason I think these are good for us is because these are not going to change. You can build a campaign on them. You can invest a week or a month, you know, making nice graphics, doing whatever you have to do to make this pro. Because it's this, this stuff isn't going to be passing in a week or a day or a month. This one, the shortest term one of the four, which is the inflation, higher interest rates, um, and recession conundrum, we'll call it that. I'll go into more detail about this. Uh, should you should you wish or not fall into a coma on Monday, but this is this is going to be around for at least a year, and it affects everybody. And there are ways to profit from it. You can sell the bonds, which is I mean I could show, here I'll just show you quickly. I'll show you what the bond prices look like, just so you know. Yeah, this is a these are weekly charts of um. Uh, this is the ten year government German government bond. This is the ten year U S note. Uh huh. Do you see? Okay, there's been a slight uh, thing because there's been this, 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 this. You know, in the, the inflation is uh, running two tenths of a percent less than people thought. Oh, 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 great! It's all over. Let's buy. These guys always show up briefly on the charts, but the trend is down, and so this is a good shorting opportunity. As a result, directly traceable to the um, interest rate rises, and we'll talk about recession things like that in more detail. But that's here with us for a year. So if you want to talk about that, vaguely, briefly, hint at it, what have you, and just show a bond chart, easy. Now, these next three are monsters. I'll start with the what hopefully is the shortest-lived one. That's the Russo-NATO war. Um, this is had a, you know, this is going to be with us for some time. I don't want to get into the gruesome details now, turn you all off, and force you to just make you shut it off now. But uh, I don't need to convince any of you that there are very, very serious economic implications, not to mention humanitarian and, and human implications, but certainly economic and financial implications that are exploitable. Wheat fell again um, because of an extension of the 
um, shipment from uh, uh, Ukraine ports agreement between Turkey, Russia, and the Ukraine. That was a good, quick shorting opportunity in wheat. And that's going to hold prices down in wheat and, and, and maybe drive them down. But um, that was that's an interesting play. And the euro in general, this war is this war is only eight months old. It's going to last for some time. The, 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 well, again, we'll go into the details on on, uh, on Sunday on Monday. But this is a major issue that's going to be with us for many many years to come. And it's going, there's a lot of money changing hands uh, related to this, and because that's always a function of war. So like it or not, our people are are semi sort of barely subconsciously aware of that, and we could potentially capitalize on it. I'm starting to sound like compliant. This next one is, is, is probably got a 10 to 50 year time horizon. We, we are right now, I would say we're progressing fairly rapidly from the foothills of a Cold War, certainly to, to, to definitely a, a, a trade war. The trading terms and the uh, sanctions imposed by the Americans on, and the, to some lesser degree the Europeans on the Chinese communists are biting, uh, particularly in the um, microelectronics and uh, microprocessor manufacturing sector, which is enormous. It's measured in the hundreds of billions of dollars a year. And so that's, that's heating up. And uh, things, are, things are bad in China. We t I'll just give you one quick look. Just to, I, I, uh, This tempts you. I don't know if this is like financial porn. No, that's not what I wish. Um, oh, yeah. So I want, I'll show you the, the, just the dollar Chinese yuan. Where is dollar yuan? Sorry about this. They seem to move around on me just to keep me annoyed. Um, well, here it is, dollar yuan. Okay, all right, it's, t it's turned down in the last, this is a weekly chart, I'll give you a daily chart. It's turned down a little bit, and it's again, this silly euphoria, but the dollar is coming back. This is a long-term chart of dollar yuan. As this ch chart goes up, it tells us that the yuan is weakening, and we'll talk about that in more detail, but that's been a fairly reliable trade now for eight, I don't know, what we were on November, 11 months already. So, um, that is a, that's a subject that's not going away, and there is going there are long term profits to be made from this in many sectors. The list of of what's going on here from a trading point of view is is quite long and extensive. We'll go into it on uh, Monday. This, of course, is going to be with us forever. This is a a um, long term riveting, obsessive, ex existential th threat question that it's 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 on everybody's minds, and it's never going away. And you can, needless to say, there's trillions, trillions of dollars being sloshing around, pretending to be a solution, looking for a solution, trying to find a solution, venturing capital to people who think they might have us, you name it, man. And, and so it's huge. And we, we carry here at the House conservatively estimated 25 stocks that cover this very, very well, legit, legit stuff that makes sense. None of this greenwashing nonsense, um, really companies that are making an effort and, and, and the charts show it. Heidelberg Cement, you know, St. Cobain, the glassmaker. Um, there's a lot of, you know, uh, well, EDF, but it was nationalized. That was my favorite. Nordex, the world's largest wind wind uh, energy producer. And we carry them all. So there's lots of opportunities, uh, you know, and, and if people need to feel good something about the climate, well, let them make a few dollars out of it. You know what I mean? I know I wouldn't, that wouldn't be my pitch, but you get the idea. So we're going to talk about these things in more detail um, on during anything, but um, sorry, ladies and gentlemen. That, but my point is that'll do it for now. Uh, think about these things. Think about you know if, you know what kind of problems you're going. You think you might um, be facing, whether it's from a compliance perspective or a marketing perspective or a, or passing any. I don't. I don't know. I know you people work under a tremendous amount of restrictions and limitations and regulations. And, you know, you may be hesitant or reluctant. So, you know, that's really what I want to talk about it more so than the actual subject matter at hand. I'm sure you know about as much about as much about as much uh, know about as much about these issues as is the people we're trying to appeal to. So I don't, we don't need to go into great deal about those things. It's more about how we can use these phenomenon to bring people into the house. And that's what I want to talk about on, on uh, Monday. So that'll do it for now. It's way, yeah, it's about the usual length. Uh, I'll, I'm your host, Seth Julian, wishing you all, ladies and gentlemen.
fellow colleagues and staff, the ability to stay awake through the staff briefing. Take care. Have a nice weekend and see you soon. Bye-bye.